estate race, spent every day on the pavement. Envying my neighbors, ashamed of my stained trainers. Answering the door every day to the same bailiffs. Rearranging dates and explaining the late payments. This ain't no kind of game, my life isn't PlayStation. Still, I wish they made a memory card I could save face with. Looking at my old penny jar, I would save changing. Now shit's getting overly hard to remain patient. I'm wishing I could switch up with you and exchange places like a state agent, but I'm still stuck. Yo, what's going on? Welcome to the Art Kid Podcast. I go by the name of Bison Briggs, and I'm joined again with my co-host after a very, very, very long time. Jay Gringo Green. We are joined today by R.I.O. Real Al Yameen. That's the new name. <laughs> One of Manchester legends. If you follow Manchester music, especially from like when I started coming through, like Market Street days, this guy was always there. Probably one of the earliest sort of big Manchester names that you can talk about and let's not beat around the bush about it. He was one of the first to get mm. on TV and do the the whole sort of routine and magazines and things like that which no one else was doing but where have you been? <sighs> that's the that's the que- that's the <laughs> question that's been asked for the past past four years since I started doing music. You know where I've been bro really I've just been um so, I'll say sort of my life I've just been kind of taking care of priorities. Yeah. You know I've got two children, two beautiful handsome young boys. Um I had to, you know, get a new gaff. Um, music wasn't really a priority. I had my own business. I've still got it now, uh, doing claims. Ups and downs with running your own company. Yeah, of course. Um, stuff like that. But, you know, I, I've, I've still been keeping my eye to the to the, to the the ground, watching what's been going on, um, keeping up to date with with, with the new, new stuff that's going on in Manchester music and obviously music in the UK. I've just been taking time, you know, bro. I've been, yeah. like, soul-searching, finding myself. And I'm in a, I'm in a great, great position mentally spiritually and physically I'm, I'm feeling in peak condition now so like forget where you've been as well and what's next sort of thing that's if anyone is watching this that isn't aware of your journey so far mm. to where you are how long have you been making sort of music in, in a whole i've been making music since 2005 yeah so that was on obviously used to live on gooch close estate with my cousin t bizzle titch he started a um, collective called street smart EMT. yeah street smart um just you know pirate radio stations Wiz Field and Unity Radio doing sets Market Street selling CDs yeah. that's how we kind of honed in on our craft um, so I've been making music what 10 10 15 years man like you know I've been making music for a long time pretty much seen it all within sort of the Manchester scene anyway seen it all daddy <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of sort of like the scene is now because obviously coming back from sort of our generation of getting into this the scene has sort of changed over the years but do you think they missed that graft of Market Street because I know that's where you sort of got about selling mixtapes as well um, I think it's healthy right now, you know, since I've come back and I've discovered obviously a few new names and some of the old, old, old lot are still doing some stuff as well. Um, it's a lot different, bro, because we're, yeah. we're living in a digital era now where by, um, I could put my music on the internet and get it to Australia, just like that. Yeah, the finger, get it to America, get it to wherever. Back then it was the old school Master P sort of hustle. Yeah, that we learned our trade, which is good because we understood <laughs> business exchange and a product for money, which is obviously a good thing. Um, but now you just put put something online and, and it just goes, you goes know, Spotify, everywhere. Tidal, and you got all your, your uh, distribution, streaming sites now. So it's a lot more yeah. easier to get to your demographic and your target audience. I had Australian birds on my Senate, we probably could have sent it to, you know, to get it over there. <laughs> Bluetooth fonts. <laughs> <laughs> but even like you, Jamie, you're, obviously you're not a musician, but you was a fan of everyone back in them days, especially the early like sort of set days. Remember like Unity Radio when it wasn't Unity Radio, it was like just that well, everyone for themselves. I was a super fan. <laughs> But from your perspective, like you always say the same, don't you? Like it's the the scene has changed. It's lost that sort of grittiness to it. You know what I mean? Like mm. like you say, getting up at nine o'clock, going and standing on Market Street till three in the afternoon, trying to sell a mixtape to nobody that wanted it as well. It's a it's a different graph now. You can throw your tune on Link Up TV and blow up tomorrow and be massive. But uh, that's just the, the um, that's just the reality of the situation now. We're living yeah. in a different time. Do you think they're missing out the sort of new generation on that? Um, yeah and no, because you know you, you, you appreciate success and what comes with it more yeah. when you've done your ten thousand hours. And when we say ten thousand hours, do music since two thousand five. Yeah, you've put in your ten thousand hours, as Kendrick is, says. They probably don't need to now, do they? No, because you put one song out now and it can get everywhere. Whereas yeah. you used to have the to fans graft, are different. You know, graft. music is turning out a lot quicker now, so there's a lot of popular fans turn yeah. to who's popular 
next. Um, he's popular. He's the new guy. Everyone shifts into him. Do you get what I mean? So it's a lot. So it's it's changed. It's different. It's a balance know? as well, because like especially when like sort of that time, your image wasn't as important as it is now. No. Like if, if you could spit bars, it did not matter. You was respected. Everyone got onto your shit. It. But now it's like. You have to look clean in your videos. You have to have all the brands on. Mm-hmm. You, know, you have to be mm-hmm. on a baller. Even one of them is going to work, depends on which mm-hmm. one you're going down. But uh, it's kind of mad to see where the scene's gone. But f- for yourself, when you was in the Manchester scene, as when you first sort of came out, was there a point where you realised you was getting a bit of a buzz? Yeah, I think it was um, when I signed with Rare Breed Music, which was Mike. Mike Clapcock was managing me at the time. That's the time when... Um, I was in Hit Em Up crew after I yeah. left Street Smart ENC. I joined Hit Em Up because obviously I like what Riggs and that were doing. They were kind of putting in that graveyard shift. Yeah, yeah. Burning CDs, getting to market shoot, you know, shutting CDs. You know, Riggs showed me a lot in terms of um, putting out mixtapes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Consistently. Um, when I linked up with Mike Rare Breed Music, that's when things started changing. Um, I had I had money behind me. Yeah. My uncle was investing and I had somebody who knew business. And I was just a workaholic, you know, there's no one that could match my work rate in the city. Um, and that was always parallel. Um, at that moment in time, um, we was getting on like BBC One Extra playlists. Yeah. I was doing tunes with Getz. Obviously I got our kids shifty on, 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 on the Wheel of Grime 1. I got Blizzard on Wheel of Grime 2. I was doing my own sold out concerts by yeah. myself, no record label, just me and my little team that I had that I assembled together. Rick Ross shows, Nas shows, uh, Labyrinth Club tours, uh, Balotelli in videos. I was doing, I was doing stuff, but I just didn't understand um, how to turn music into a business to have that longevity yeah, of yeah. source of income from music. Yeah, do you get what I'm saying? I was always relying, um, dependent on my uncle's income, which would only last so long if there's not a return. Yeah, because business is business regardless of being a family. Um, but you know, I, I built a good core foundation, and for me, I am already successful in in um, in music because the goals that I set aside years ago, I accomplished yeah. them. So I look at music more of not the monetary value of what you can earn, more on goals based. Have I fulfilled my goal, and which I have done? Yeah. So when you signed sort of rare breed, mm. I'm guessing the sort, of, especially that time as well, Manchester artists weren't getting signed at all anyway. I mean, you had a couple of people who had record labels and stuff but they weren't they were just like bedroom record labels or a group of yeah they weren't the major label record deals so did you sort of deal with going into that and have, like you say having a financial backing behind you which not many people had then yeah I mean it was more of a management deal than, yeah. a, than a record label I mean the, the Rare Breed record label was an independent label um, and me and Mike were kind of 50-50 he he, he done um, that side of things in terms of all the logistics and I done all the linking producers getting records yeah. out writing and doing stuff like that. And then my uncle obviously enabled us to have that consistency because not a lot of people know to stay consistent in music, you know, you do need funds, you yeah, do need course. money to, to put in. Probably why a lot of people um, kind of stop. Because you've got to pay for your life as well. Because your life don't pay for itself, does it? Yeah, exactly. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm. You've got responsibilities like myself. I've got two children. I've always been in my kid's life. My, my son's um, 12 now. In you know, I've never left his side since he's born. Do you think so. ba- back... Back in the day, like the, mm. I call it like the golden era. Yeah. So the back, golden generation. Back in the golden generation, yeah. do you think it was more difficult to make money through music? Yes. Mm. Um, the only way we understood how to make money at that time was going to Market Street. Now you're making what fifty pound, hundred pounds. Yeah. I remember. To be fair, though, Shifty that done all right with their Shifty was grime the T-shirts. Person I ever seen. Shifty had the Maddie bus. Like there was, yeah. there was not a buzz sure. like him. Yeah. He was literally two minutes. People say I was five minutes in a taxi from breaking the, the mm. UK, he was literally two minutes away mm. from stardom. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so. we was talk, we talked about that with Blizzard, like Shifty was literally on the, the edge of being... He was there. What, H and Bugsy and things like that there. now, yeah? He was there, he was there. Because you did, I mean, obviously, talking about Shifty as well, Shifty on the Westwood thing, but I know you did that as well, which at the time was like a, a big badge of honour sort of thing, especially in yeah. UK hip-hop. How did that sort of come about and getting onto them? What was that like? Well, the way I got onto the Westwood show was my... Song can't stop with featuring my brother, uh, Mr. Benz. K1 produced that. Now, we got, um, when we done the video, Shaz One Way TV, we just kind of captured um, footage from when I used to do tours. Just everywhere yeah. we went, I had a camera yeah, on me. Sort of stuff. And then we fortunate enough, we got um, Balotelli in the video, Rio Ferdinand, Brooke from Coronation Street. We got Labyrinth in the video. Um, we captured Tim Westwood. Um, 
And that got to the paper, got to the press, yeah. Daily Mail. I mean, when I woke up and I went out, I was in my side, I felt like I was, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, yo, geez, yeah. I, I'm, I'm the guy in the hood now. I'm like, <laughs> cheers, it was going off, yo, chinchilla, red I'm carpet. Born. You get what I'm saying? Car doors coming up. I always kept it, my integrity, man, people. I'm the people's chump, man. So um, that, that record got to one extra, so Mr. Jam, um, DJ Target was playing it and then Westwood heard it and then he put yeah. it number one at his six at six. Obviously Drake, Rick Ross and that was in there, but he never he never had no man in my music, as yeah. it says in the video, because we captured it, can't stop with video, it's on YouTube. And then we clocked, I think it's like 150,000 views in like three, four days or yeah. something Especially mad like that. That time, that time that's like clocking two mil. Yeah, no. these are. Do you get what I'm saying? In in, in like a week or something. Yeah. Well, I'll say, I'll say about a mil. Two mils have been, you see, been for, extravagant. Because for a time, I remember when Unity always played your songs, I don't think they played anyone else. Yeah, that's because I had green in the <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they played. <laughs> From nine till nine, it was just your, your full album. No, yeah, no, yeah. We, we, we were the first, Rare Breed Music, me and Mike, we were the first to sort of, show um, our peers how to structure a record. So you don't just put it out. And, and we got this from when we went to One Extra to get a song on the playlist. Laura Lacans at the time, she's from Manchester. She she was the playlist manager. Um, and she was saying to us, look, to get on here, there's certain boxes you need to tick. What numbers are you getting? Have you got a buzz in the street? Um, how many um, videos have you got lined up? Do you have a full project so that um, DJs can consistently? Um, yeah. So right. we had to go back to the grassroots, mm. go back to the foundation to create that. And we started putting out singles, but not just putting it out, we had a marketing plan, a strategy, when to put it out. Three weeks later, put out a video. Three weeks later, put out another one, then put out a project, get it to this person, have a PR company behind us that could get us to places where we couldn't get, go out on the road to different towns, not getting paid for it. Go to this radio station, go to that, go Leicester, get up, go down there, go there, go there, go around the UK, just promoting, the, and then it, it just created its own momentum, obviously doing the school tours as well. And then, you know, showing the consistency, DJ Target got behind us and all the other one extra DJs and stuff like that. And that's how it kind of just- Was Rebri just you and Mike, or was there an artist on that? Um, at the time, me it was me and Mike, and then um, Rick Walker. Yeah, no, singer. Rick, the singer, yeah. Um, and then he had a little spell with Meanie, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. A bit tap you got them on a fire in a boo years and years ago. Yeah. Um but yeah, it was just mainly me and Mike doing a rare breed thing. And is that sort of rare breed sort of <coughs> chapter come to an end now? Yeah, that come to an end. I mean, I mean me and Mike um ended this um management artist thing amicably. Yeah. I wanted to f go further with my career. He got me to as far as he could. Right. No, he didn't have any more resources. Yeah. My ambition was to it was through the roof. I seen um, I could see my goals and I knew I could get to that point over there yeah. regardless of money or anything I knew that with my mindset and my ambition and my talent I can get there there's no, there's no stopping me and as soon as Mike left funny enough I'd done my own headline concert and sold it out yeah. at Dry Bar by myself this was no no. I had to put the money in yeah, do you get yeah. what I mean Um, I got my sister to do the door, she done the accounts. I got my boy Duffy, um, he does my security, he works at Jerry McCall at the time, he done my security. I got Sabrina to do this, I got Courtney to host it. I got my support acts, all from Manchester support acts. Yeah. And we sold it out, I made you know made a few quid off that as well. Um, but that's what I'm saying, I had to do that by myself because I wasn't yeah. settled. Mike got me on a playlist, so Mike's goal was, I'm gonna get you to the playlist, yeah. which he did. Yeah. I was like, that's not enough. So I want to do my own headline concerts. Sometimes that's when you know it's a good manager. If he knows he can't take you any further. He was honest. Yeah. Best way to sometimes just cut ties and say, look, I can't take you to that next step. And, and you know what? We speak. We still speak now. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're boys, man. It's my brother that. And you know what? To be fair, I'm, I'm a comeback and that, that we'll get into. I tried to lure him back in, didn't I? Yeah. yeah fish and red, <laughs> but, you know, he's doing very well with his network marketing business. Yeah. And, you know, them guys travel to Dubai with a laptop, do what I was working at Sitchell. Yeah. I mean, if you could in a back. It's just, it's <laughs> you can't complain about that, can you? Yeah, come on. Um, but <laughs> he's always, he's there supporting me, you know, he's giving me the YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a little advice and stuff like that. He's always there just to, yeah. you know, steer me in certain directions. If it's that easy to do network marketing, why are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Can we go to buy now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm is. off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so when you did, um, there was a couple of songs that you brought out, and was it the Long Road and uh, Mr. Unpredictable at the same time? Narrow Road. Narrow Road, sorry. Yes. And uh, Mr. Unpredictable, was that with Rare Breed? Because I remember them sort of being like the big singles before you mm -hmm. sort of 
steps out of music for a bit. Yeah, Narrow Roads was put out through Rare Breed label. Okay. So we put that out um, when we went down to I Love Live. We went down to watch a show, and then at the end of that, there was like an um, open mic. Yeah. And whoever won that would get to perform at the I Love Live a few months down the line. So I went up, shelled it, killed it. And at the time, Bless Beats was in the crowd. Yeah. He was producing for Roll Deep at the time, Wiley and them on there. Um, and then he invited me to the studio the day after. So we had to go and book a hotel. That weren't the plan. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm saying. So our success, Rare Breed, was always just not in the plan. It just, just being get there. there, gets us to there. Yeah. And then when we get there, that door opens and gets us there. And then Organic we get there, yeah. yeah. So then the, de- the day after that, we linked Target, because obviously Roll Deep at the time. And then I wrote the song on the way back to Manny, got Mike's missus at the time, Rachel on the hook. And then the rest was history from there. So, and the Mr. Unpredictable after that, was that still just carried on the same sort of organic journey to where you was at? Mr. Unpredictable was a mistake. Um, I think at the time, Narrow Road's great, great record. And then we done Forgive Me. And that was the first time we kind of, in Manchester, we were seeing actors in a video, yeah. like a proper clean cut video. And then we done the Mr. Unpredictable and me and Mike speak about it um, all the time. I think that was where we kind of lost our momentum in terms of the core fans. It was too tiny temperish. The okay. glasses, the, 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 you know, the blazer, the tie, the geek, the kind of geeky rap kind of thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. from my side. I'm from the estate. I'm from, you know, I'm from, I'm yeah, from my side estate. Like, that, that's not you. Yeah. When you listen to the, the, the narrative in, in um, Narrow Roll, talking about when I used to shot and getting locked up and whatever, obviously it was negative music at the time, but it was my story yeah. at the time. It, it was relatable. People related to it um, and bought into it and a missed unpredictable sort of, <laughs> we lost that trust with the audience. Yeah. You get what Did I you mean? feel that as well? Yeah. Most definitely, yeah, yeah. Because you can't remember Narrow Roads was doing good numbers and you know, that we got like over 100,000 views in a week. At the time that was very hard to get. And then Mr. Unpredictable, it kinda, it did, it did well on radio. Yeah. Because at the time that's what radio wanted, you see. Yeah. And that was a thing we kind of, um, we kind of um, compromised with the radio stations to get on. We, yeah. we should have kept it like, no, but at the time to get on the radio, you have to, to now. I'm listening to radio. I'm hearing all sorts going on. Yeah, you just laugh. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> laugh every day. Yeah, I feel like oh. putting a ballet on. I feel like putting <laughs> a ballet to listen to the radio. That's <laughs> mad. You can't just like temp- tiny temper and walk through my side anymore. Hey, you get yeah, them in. Because <laughs> yeah, I remember that video. That was on. Was it like Channel AKA? Did it get it on TV that one point? I remember yeah, seeing that. Yeah, all, yeah. all our all our videos were on TV because we had a great um, plugger, Gabby. Batushi, or was it Batushi? I think it was, she's a fantastic plugger. She, she had like a lot of contacts. Yeah. So we'd give her the project, there's the artwork, there's the video, there's the record, and then say, right, I've got these contacts here, TV contacts, Complex Magazine, Rewind Magazine, this, that, that, and then she'll go out and distribute it yeah. out there and then we'd pay every month for a service. What was that like for yourself? Obviously, like you say, being a kid from my side and at that time being on TV with a rap song was pretty You know what, remember then I was gas, man, I, you know, I was a lot younger than I am now and um, it, it didn't get to my head and I've always been a, a grounded person yeah. I've always been able to just keep it 100 with everything everybody I do I don't look at myself as I'm better than anybody I just look at that I've got a gift that's a God given gift and uh, I know how to use it well um, but at the time it was great you know because obviously the community looked at me as the, the star in the hood you're yeah. the guy you're representing for us it's very hard from you know being around my cousins who obviously were affiliated in, in gangs at the time um, for me to be travelling around the country doing something legal yeah it was unheard of like, what are you doing it's going Doncaster yeah, to what perform. you doing down there yeah. just to perform <laughs> take a few pictures with fans get paid <laughs> stay in a hotel then go to the next city do something else and <laughs> It was good, man. You know, it was good. It was a. I see myself as a an inspiration, man. So obviously, after that sort of was that sort of the time you was thinking of stepping away for a bit, or did that just come up? There was there a certain incident that made you decide I need a break, or I just ran out of steam, bro. It was two thousand and sixteen. I got a song online um, called Adversity, and when you listen to that, you can kind of see mentally. Uh, my mental health wasn't really there. I was suffering with a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, loss. A lot of doubt and just, uh, at the time, the supply line from my uncle had stopped. Yeah. So I went from being consistent. Nobody in the city was touching or getting nowhere near me. I was I was the guy. Yeah. I was the guy in the most humble way possible. Um, so then not to have that consistency, I couldn't live up to what people were used to. Yeah. I had, I had a son at the time. Um, and I thought, yo, I can't be doing this road thing. 
I can't be on the road risking my freedom when I have a son. Yeah. It's not happening. It's not. I'm not doing it. So the embarrassing thing, it was not embarrassing, but I had to get a job. So I'm walking into a call centre now. Check this one out. I've gone into a call centre. Um, I've walked in there. And bro, you would have thought that Kanye walked in. The whole place looked like, <laughs> what the hell are you doing yeah. in here? What are you doing in here? You're, what are you? And I was like, I was like, shit, you know what? This is a bit mad still. <laughs> Man's got the headphones on with fans that are next to me. <laughs> fans that are telling me spa, spraying bars, do me heading at lunchtime, spraying bars in here. Did you know? <laughs> did they, did you I swear, you I, I kid you not. Know? <laughs> of course I did. No, the phone on the line. Someone's ringing to get a broadband fix and you're putting 16s on the phone. Of course, <laughs> man. Like, you know, funny enough, when I was on the phone, I would always give my, my real name and yeah. a few people would notice who it was. I'm like, what are you doing? But I wasn't embarrassed. I seen it as I had to put food on the table for my kids. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah, of course. I've got to do, I, have, I had opportunities. My cousins are on the road making till, making dough, doing stuff. Uh, but you know, I just thought, you know what? I believe in my talent, I believe in my gift, I will bounce back. But at that time, yeah, mentally, I wasn't in a in a, in a good place, man. I, uh, nowhere near where I am now, nowhere near. So you said that you reached all the goals that you set initially. Yeah. Do you have a new set of goals now? Yeah, I do. I've got some goals. I've got a vision board. I've got the same process that I had in my mind. When I have something in my mind, um, I have this thing of of attracting it. I, I I understand the formula of attracting things into my life, which I, I've always done for many years now. Um, I've got a vision board, so I'll have vision visual goals that yeah. I want on, my, on a board. And then next to it, I have them written down as well. So I would focus on that in the mornings, do my meditation and stuff like that. A few of them have been coming to me. Um, which has been mad, uh, but I, can't, I get the I get the formula. My whole comeback is about my um, legacy. I don't. I believe that I, I didn't leave no stone unturned. I didn't fulfil my legacy in this city. My comeback is nothing to do with um, fame. I've had fame before. I've, felt, I've tasted business. it. There's unfinished business, that, and and the new crop of talent is. Tremendous, it's fantastic. I love what's going on with the key artists that are doing stuff now that I've been doing stuff since I've been ghost. I've always been um, supportive of them when I've been going to my barber shop. Yo, Reed, this guy's doing this. Yo, Reed, Bugs is doing this. Yo, Reed, H is doing this. Yo, Reed, Mix is doing this. I'm like, Yo, great, fantastic, great. I will be back, and the music I'm making um, is unmatched. Is there anybody specifically that you want to work with who wasn't around, who you don't know personally from back in the day? Any new Manchester artists that you'd like to work with? Um, you can see yourself doing everybody, it. you know, a lot of my, um, a lot of people always want me to work with Bugsy. They yeah. see a lot of similarities. There is a lot of similarities in terms of um, he does sports. He likes sports. Mm. Very um, talented boxer. Um, he 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 understands the law of attraction. I used to study that when I was yeah, coming yeah. up with Rare Breed. That's what I used to do. The same look, kind of. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and you both crap on motorbikes. I can't, I don't, I don't ride them things. <laughs> I, 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 I don't ride them things. No, God bless his soul, man. Because when I seen that accident, you know, it was um, it was a bad accident. And I did, you know, I knelt down and said a prayer for him at the time when it when it actually happened. Um, I like Meeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I like about Meeks is um, he's got that No Limit Soldier vibe, that Master P. He's got something about him, I believe. What, I, it's just very relatable. I like his tone of his voice. Um, I like his um, confidence. Yeah. This kid like is. This kid well. is. When I seen the tanks and he's throwing his arms on the tanks, like can't stop, won't stop. I don't it care. What it seems like I don't care who's at that door <laughs> from UK and you better move out that door, you know, because everybody's getting mulled over. Even <laughs> yeah. man from money, I don't want to let my own guys yeah, down, yeah. but if you're in my way, and I know a few people that know him. When you got a tank on the driveway, it helps, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And I know a few people that know him. Um, one of my friends called Natalie. Um, She's very supportive of my music when I was coming up. She's very tight with him as well. Um, so, you know, I like her. I, like, I love what H is doing as well. Do you get what I mean? Um, is, is, is a, is a, they're, all great, they're, they're all great in different ways. Yeah. It's good to see him go clear because, like, like you say, back in the day, you, it was a success getting a Westwood or Charlie Sloth firing the booth. But now it's like, if you're from Manchester, you can actually be successful at this now. I think now, um, it's been a long time coming, bro. Yeah, I think serious. back then, Especially f for me, can't understand your accent. Yeah, don't know. Now, what H has done is, 
he's as mank as it is. He's, he's Liam Gallagher mank. He don't <laughs> yeah. get any more mank than him. And he don't care. He's on Radio 1, so you get me. Yes. Manny. <laughs> Manny, mate. You know what I'm saying, mate? Come on, our kid. Do you know what I mean, I mate? I say that like, years ago. Straight. And that's, all, and that's great because what he's, what, he, what he's done now is he's um, made the accent acceptable. Yeah. There's no, there's, he's global. There's no. Don't tell him thing. that he'll be in a green parker coat in his next <laughs> video. Oh, you're a big haircut on that. Fuck <laughs> hell, thinking about it. All right, <laughs> well, just took going back a little bit when you said, because obviously I know a lot of artists that have been through sort of the similar thing to you where they've had the taste of success and then the mental health has got on the way and they've had to step aside. Yeah. Do you think what you're coming back to now is going to help your mental health? Or Most if, definitely. If sort of, obviously, talk about your success and your failures at the same time, but if the vision board doesn't work out the way you plan it, do you feel like you're ready to accept that as well? Yeah, I'm a um, very spiritual um, individual. Um, I've been raised by God um, from a family as a young, that's all I know, subconscious, that's all I know. That's what I've always stuck by. Um, and I always think if it's his will, um, then it's his will that will happen. If it doesn't, I'm talented enough. I'm like a social butterfly. Yeah. So anything I put my mind to, um, I can achieve. Um, and like I said, you know, this this album, this new album, The Good, The Bad and Ugly, it's, it's basically my life story. That no, the title says what it is. It's my life story um, and I'm in no rush to achieve them goals. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I, like I said, I've already feel feel successful in music. Cause I, I, don't, I don't monitor success by money because money is just a, a product. It's, yeah, of course. It's, it's man-made, it's, it's a product in it, money. So I don't really see it as, I see it as more as how many people can I inspire? Yeah. Um, um, from my community, how many people can I inspire? And I, 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 I think I, two people got murdered in Mossad um, not too long ago at a street party, and I did a, I did a Mossad tribute. There was no one else in 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 I believe um, that could have articulated what I did at the time. It's called Mossad tribute, um, where I kind of um, went onto both sides of the estate, huge close estate where I was born and raised and done it in a state where my friends and a few people that I know were raised and I just tried to bridge the gap and show my support um, to the innocent lives and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, man, you know, the goal, in, in terms of the goals, I've got long-term goals. Yeah, yeah. I've got little quick short goals to keep yeah, me go going, to keep me going. But like I said, it's more of, I feel, I'm, I, I already feel successful because yeah. after four years from what I went through to get to this point now, I'm already successful because yeah. I've already got to this point. I didn't think I was, I was never going to make music again, bro. I was never making music again. I was done. Did you lose the love? Yeah, most definitely. I lost, when you lose the love for something, it's hard to get out of your bed and do it. I didn't have a direction of what I wanted to do. I was, I was all over the place. Yeah, when, it, when, when you lose the love for something, it's, it's very hard so to find that courage. You feel lost afterwards. Like, yeah. What do I do now? Yeah, but you know what? During, I started making money. Mm. from my claims business. Yeah. Started like getting old. a bit more comfortable yeah. again. I started, <laughs> <clears throat> um, where, where I could take my kids on holidays yeah. and do, I didn't have to ask nobody for nothing. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Legally, I was doing that legal, it was legal money. Um, but there's always something chipping away. Like, you're not, you're not finished it, have you, lad? And I'm, look, I'm watching what's give, going on. I'm, I'm, yeah. And then every time I'm going to the barber shop, everyone's like, re, lad, like, this guy's doing this. Thing. Ta when it comes to talent, like, come on, mate. Like, phew. You jump you, back in. It's jump, just jump in. It's not even a thing. Once you get your branding and marketing right, just jump in. What I've noticed is, especially somebody who's made music and stepped out of it and come back into it, when you come back into it, you always have that feeling of, if this next single doesn't work, I shouldn't have jumped back into it. So it's that anxiety of actually taking a step to do it. I brought out, I had done a single called Black Hoodie and Hat two years ago, and I shit my pants, I'll tell you why. Um, done the song, um, done the video with TJ and whatever it was. And I'm thinking, I was putting a little bit train or trying to make a bit of noise and it went happening. And I was thinking, yeah. can't people, don't people know who I am? Kind of thing in my <laughs> head. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at numbers are popping. People are popping with numbers, millions yeah. of views. I'm like, what, this is a new thing, this now. I shit, I thought, what if I put it out and get a thousand views? I'm fucked. Big, big RIO, big old RIO, big, you've done all these things. That's done, with that kind of CV and that history yeah. and that talent. And I went to go put it out a week before, I said, no, I even messaged Target, Target, big door. I contacted Target after being out of the game so long, he made it record of the week straight away because he understood <laughs> yeah. my con what I do. He knew I was, I gassed him, I was like, I'm ready. I'm re I weren't ready. Yeah. I weren't mentally ready yet. I, I, didn't, I didn't do my spiritual, mental and physical. 
that I do consistently now. I didn't, I didn't do all that. I didn't, I didn't sink it into my subconscious. I wasn't ready. Um, and I just pulled out and, and that lost me a lot of credit, credibility. It's like the boy cried wolf now. So when I'm hitting up these big contacts, a lot of big people follow me and I know who I am. They just, I won't say they're ignoring me, they're what I see. Yeah. yeah. So I said, yeah, <laughs> watch what goes on now. So what sort of going into what you've got coming next? Is, a, is it an album or an EP or? Album, debut album, album yeah, debut Blood album. The the Ugly? Yes, yes. How, how's that come about? Was it just sort of jump straight in the studio or was it a process over the last few months and stuff? Um, uh, uh, more t December, um, November 2019 um, is when I started to, I said to myself, everybody knows that I can spit uh, bars and that's all they know. Like you, just, you can spray bars, you yeah. just you can spit, but we don't know you. We don't know your story. We don't know who you truly are. And I thought, you know, I'm going to have to be vulnerable and, and showcase some embarrassing things. Just my life, so... I contacted MJSD from Virus Syndicate, you know. Yeah. Um, and I just said to him, look, I need to tell my story. I need to, this is my fear. This is, and then I, I remembered the fear bubble, the book. Yeah. And yeah. I understood I'm breaking, I'm but I'm starting this fear. Right, okay, here's a big fucking stack. I'm not playing games. There you go. That's my, I'm ready. Let's yeah. go. We ain't playing. What are we talking for? Let's go. Let's get it in there. There's nothing talking about. I'm talking, I'm talking for. And then, um, he understood the concepts that I wanted to make. It was very touchy subjects, um, things that people would be surprised about. A story that no one's ever heard. No one knows my story. Yeah. To get what I'm saying, no one knows my story. So they're gonna get my story on this album. Um, and I wanted to make it very musical. I'm a big fan of like the Daves and the Canals. Yeah. I like the art of, I come from the era of art. Um, bars, lyrics, concepts, um, flows, technical ability. That's where I'm from. But I wanted to mix that as well with up-to-date 2020 beats, yeah, yeah. big kicks, drum bass, swag. Um, so yeah, we've got the concepts locked down. Um, got some features on there. Got Me Should Be um, on there. Um, Aya, Aya Blues on there on a song. I'm, I'm, I'm my brother, Killer Benz, Mr. Benz, who's on Can't Stop We. There's only three features. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to say this, but yeah, you know, it's... I believe it's um, one of, if not the best projects come out of this year. Sip, sip. So when, when is it out? When is it all keen to come out? Is November. November? <laughs> Look at you <laughs> flooding there. November, bro. So um, that's yeah. without November, but obviously I want to touch on just before we go into that, sort of the Lost Archives project that you started doing. Yes. Um, what was that about? Because I've, <clears throat> sorry, I've watched a few of them and um, it's a lot of stories. I remember like Eastern Block and Market Street and things like that. What made you do that? You know, what was funny is one of, um, someone who's managing me now, a guy called Luke, funny enough, he's been supporting my music for the past 12, 13 years. Yeah. And he had a picture of him when he was at my bottom to the top concert that I sold out. He's only young, we both had no, no hair. It was a young kid, <laughs> didn't it? And it's just weird, it's surreal that he's now come on board and now yeah. he's working as a, as a business partner as well um, on another production line that we've got, um, that we're setting up called How You Mean. Um, he sent me a, um, a folder of a hundred songs. He went, I've got loads of songs. I went, what? Of yours? And I, like, eh? So he <laughs> sent me a bunch, some with Shifty, this, that, some with Shotty, bad, I might, it, brought, it was like a memorabilia. So it brought back <laughs> yeah. bare memories. I'm like, ras, bro. Because remember at the time, MySpace times, when we was selling CDs, we didn't think, let's keep your music. Yeah, yeah. We didn't think that. We've just turning them out. We've got just throwing them out. Yeah, we put out a lot of content. So he said, so and we come up with a concept um, called uh, the Lost Archives. Um, all my own music. So we thought, let's brand this up. It's yeah. not just about. I understood. I said, now nah, let's do that because he understands marketing and branding. He said, it's a different era now. You're going to be screaming to an empty room. Yeah. You yeah. think you hey, yeah, you you jiggy? No, it's not jigging, mate. Nothing's happening. Nothing's gonna happen unless you market your product, even if it's old music. So then I'm thinking, yo, there's some old classics. I'm thinking, yo, my catalog's mad. You know if we used to do the ver versus thing? Yeah. I mean, it'd be very good. I mean, the only person that I feel could um, give me a good run for my money, yeah, you probably could kill it is Riggs, yeah. in terms of catalog. You should get what's, on the catalog. Your favorite, if you had to pick one song out of your catalog, that's your best piece of best project you've ever done or best piece of music, what would you pick? What's your favourite of your own? You see, you got... 
If you're talking like grime music and just grime bars, I would say Wheel of Grime with Shifty and Gets. Yeah. Or Narrow Roads. It's a toss up between them two. Can't stop. We had a spell. Adversity. Um, we, we, we are we are now, um, cause I put one out tonight, we are now three or four more tracks left and then that's done. The, 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 the archive is done 19, we had, 20, we had way more. Yeah, but because yeah. we couldn't go to album, I thought, right, I'm getting a sense that people want new music now. Yeah, like, yeah, we, yeah. We, we want new stuff. Yeah. Right I've been right dropping, I've been dropping, dropping a few gems, a um, few new freestyles here and there, and people are like, yo, what, are you all right? I said, <laughs> yeah, you don't, know, you don't, you don't know what's about to come me. Like, it's about to, it's, it's going to be a thing. What's your favourite show you've done up to this day? What's the best show you've done? I would say the best show I have done. Um, One you enjoyed the most while you did it. <sighs> if you could go back to that moment in, and do a, it. It's a, it's a toss up between three. There was Reading and Leeds Festival that I did. Um, bottom to the top concert, which I sold out twice. And then Sound Control. Um, I used to love Sound Control. I, I think that was. Sound Control, I had JP Cooper as my support act. Yeah. He's massive. Yeah, he's freaking huge. He's though, huge. Right? He was my support act. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's, it's, I'm t- he's telling you, he's my support act. Well, yeah. He's ridiculous. Well, Ed Sheeran was in Scorch's band. Wanna? That's how that. we got noticed in music. He was Scorch's guitarist. It's mad. <laughs> um, I would say Bottom to the Top concert because yeah. we sold it out and we, f- through um, popular demand, we had to put on another date. I mean, it was a 300 capacity venue. So we in the mad. Like, oh, I've just sold four or five thousand tickets by the time that was like I said that was one of my goals because I used to put all my goals on my ceiling yeah. in squares because it was the first thing I would see in the morning and the last thing I would see at night so subconsciously I'm putting that information into my subconscious um, and that was one of the things I said sold out shows and it didn't happen straight away and I, I put them goals when I had my I had my, the money coming in from my yeah. uncle and it didn't happen but I never lost faith in that it was going to happen and I did it by myself and um, sold it out and funny enough, I stayed in the Novotel in Manchester, thought I was the big dog in it. <laughs> so here's me booking hotels and all that. <laughs> so he's there, he's the whole budget on two five stars. <laughs> <laughs> I had my uncle pick me up in a range. and it, You know, we put on a show um, and the support was incredible, man. It was, it was, man, I would say Bottom to the Top was my most iconic moment in regards that's to... personal um, to you, that's Yeah, it. very personal. And the mixtape was called Bottom to the Top and I've always gone with that slogan from the bottom to the top kind of thing. So yeah, that was the... It is good doing it. Like you say, Reading and Leeds and stuff like that's good, but it's, it's not necessarily your crowd, it's is not it? my when show. It's yeah, your yeah. show, your the headliner. They bought tickets to come and watch me. Mate, when I, I remember I've I, I done an article with the man and I did say, um, when I went to release that announced that the show tickets online, I was shitting, yo, bro, I was like, yo, what if only 10 people turn up? And the 10 people that turn up, are friends and family, like, of course <laughs> they going to turn up. And I was like, yo, this is mad. And then I put it on and then it's like, emails were coming in, emails were coming in, emails. But at that time I was consistent, people were hungry for it, narrow roads, yeah. can't stop me, we love. People were wanting to see you live or want to see them songs live. I went to one of our kids' shows and it was just him rapping at the bar, man. <laughs> yeah. You know the story with Ed Sheeran when he only did a show and there's only like three, four people. He's, he figured on a picture with him there and then I think he sold out like in Madison Square Garden <laughs> or something. Like <laughs> or just 100,000 people or something. I think that's part of it though, isn't it? Especially when you're an artist. Like, I've done gigs with it, where it is just me and the bar, man. I've done gigs like festivals and stuff. So it's it's, it's a different... It's, you, you appreciate the small ones, I think. Yeah, I think the small ones, because I, I, I'm a showman. I, I think out of anything that I love doing the most in music is performing live. I love performing. Yeah. I love performing. I mean, I like recording music and... Um, I'm writing music and having like writing sessions and stuff, but I come alive when I hit that stage. I know how to. Um, it's a different adrenaline, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different adrenaline. I know how to control things. I I feel very um in like not in charge, but I feel in control of my destiny. When I see so many people, I think I'm gonna make you fans of me. Like you where where you supposed to be? Yeah, they, they, it's where I belong. Yeah, they, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like I'm at home. Um, it's just a weird chilling. thing. I, I always think when you Surreal, get on stage, bro. you have the butterflies. As soon as the first beat kicks on the first song, it's like something else just takes over. Man, when I got to Red and Leeds, Mike was gonna kick Mike and they kick me on stage. I went <laughs> I got there and I went out around the curtain. I ain't going out there. I couldn't see a patch of green. I'd have seen a lot. I ain't going out there, mate. It's like you better you better get you know what it's taught me to get you on there. No artists in Manchester were doing big festivals like that. You better I say I can't go out there. And I did I did um, I did a um, Wonderwall, obviously a waste. I'm yeah. a massive Leah, I'm a massive I wouldn't say I'm a massive Liam Gallagher fan. Yeah, yeah. Him as a person, I think he's just mad. Something about him, he's just, 
I, I just love everything about it. Even when he performs this way, his hands behind his back, his rolls up like that, looking at the man like that, looking at the just crowd. Like, I just it, love it. it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Mega cocky in there. That's yeah. what he is, but it works for him, doesn't it? He's not the best of singers, and he'll say that himself, but it's not that. It's his persona. That it's the whole package. It's yeah. the package. Mm. He's, a man, he's a lad, isn't he? Yeah. So for yourself, what's sort of next after Good and Bad or Ugly? Is there any plans then, or is it all focused just on that for now? Um, we are, um, I'm just funny if I'm shooting a video tomorrow. I've got another project, 75% complete, um, ready again. Um, I think for me, it's just consistency. Yeah. I'm getting that consistency right. Music, like I said, is not, a, it's not an issue, you know. I, I, you know, I, I have got a big up JSD because he did, um, did a great job um, with the with the production. Um, and we had a little listening session to ourselves. And we listened from track one, track ten. I went, you know what, bro? This can compete with anything in the UK. Like, let's not kid ourselves because we always look up to the chips and the K. Oh, yeah. yeah. Forget that. Forget that. Get your music and play your music with my music. And we're trying to be very, I think with us as well, it's in Manchester as well, and this is why I said I like, what I like about Meeks is we always kind of feel like we can't. Oh, is there such yeah, and such? Oh, oh, there's a... a May I've done tunes with Gets. I've done yeah. this. I, I forgot who I was, and that's the thing, what happened with me. I forgot who I was. I forgot who my mum was and who my dad was in the community and what they've done and how big they were, their legacies. And I had to take a deep look into myself and, and, and say, why am I always trying to prove that I'm a humble nice f that bro like that's done I ain't interested listen I ain't trying to prove I'm a nice guy fucking everyone knows I'm a nice guy I'm a nice guy anyway by nature that's my, that's my nature I couldn't be anything else because you'd be fake <laughs> it's not that but see when it comes to this music thing what I understand that's what I like about Storms as well because um, he's come from a very um, spiritual background as well but you see when he touches that mic yeah, don't, don't talk to me mate don't speak to me and that's the kind of attitude I've got don't speak to me what are you speaking to me for what, what are you speaking are you competing what, what are you doing I'm ready. Let's get in the lab. Let's go. And we listened to it, me and JSD, and we said, you know what, bro? I listened to Dave. I had Dave's album, Cycle Drama, had Kano's on repeat for a year. And we're listening. Jay Huss came and listen, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I said, I need a. I, I like music. I like the intricates of music. And, and then I, I played mine. And I said, I'm ready. Forget it's numbers. Really Obviously, numbers and who they are, I'm there. They're. Um, Success, very inspirational, um, but uh, it's undeniable music. That's what you are there. It, so, in the golden era, in the golden era, who was your personal top five best Manchester artists? You don't have to be in any order. Um, if you want to do them in order, Shifty, okay. Riggs, Shotty. In that generation? Yeah. Yeah. Meanie. I got into Meanie pretty late, to be fair. Meanie comes and goes, doesn't he? He comes out and you don't hear from him for 10 years and bangs yeah. out an album and everyone's on it straight away again. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, What's interesting though? Blizzard. Yeah. Listen he is a nice shot. guy. He didn't put himself in it. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting though is your top five there. Apart from Blizzard, the first time we've had Blizzard, which is a good shout. He's pretty much been there. Everyone's had it. Well, you got to remember, Blizzard's um, an incredible producer. Oh yeah, yeah. He produced The Naked Truth and me and um, Misha B, and he was playing the piano and the beat. Um, Blizzard's uh, he's a weirdo with the bars. He's just a whiz kid. Is is that? Yeah. He's just. Um, you can tell that obviously he's, he's been Musical influenced enough. from yeah, yeah. Shifty, but the great thing about Blizzard is he came out in his own because he was always Shifty's cousin. He's yeah. known as Shifty's cousin. Yeah, yeah, and he broke out. I know he went through similar mental things that yeah. I did, and that's how I connected with you guys when I watched that. I thought, hmm, hmm, you went through certain things where you couldn't, you just couldn't, you couldn't. It's like, I can't get out of bed, I can't do this. Mentally, he was gone, and I felt that I related to that as well. I think a lot of artists do that, don't they? I think it's that fear, like you say, putting something out and it flopping. That's the biggest sort of... Because mm. you take that... I think you take that into your normal life as well. Like, if you put a single out and it flops, it, you think about it for weeks. I yeah, think. I can't function. Yeah. Yeah, snap, being, snappy at the kid, being snappy with the kids. Yeah. Uh, you know, speaking to people disrespectfully and having a chip on my shoulder. And it's because, it's cause, you know, like I was speaking to Riggs about this the other day. Um, we have sacrificed our lives. I nearly got killed when I was in Street Smart three times. 
you know, because obviously there was a lot of gang activity that was going on at the time, risking lives and uh, relationships, time with my kids, I risked time with my kids, money. Um, dad kicked me out of the house because uh, I was about what's going on really and I was being, I was being an idiot and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, we've, we've, it's not just, it's not just our, what a million views. Oh, yeah. oh what are this? It's more than that. It's it sounds like you're doing music for you now rather than being famous or being yes. a success. At, like, success in yeah. terms of I, TV. I was getting packed out in um, San Carlos with Balotelli. Yeah. I was getting about. He, funny enough, he tweeted one of my, he tweeted me the other day. Uh, I was thinking, how's, how's my thing? They got 10,000 hits in like a few hours. <laughs> I'm back. Fuck you, I'm back. Superstar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But well, you know, obviously, I've I've grown into um, a much more just chilled. I'm just cool. Yeah. I'm cool, and everything's cool, man. Everything's everything. Everything. What will be will be. What's for you? Everything's timing as well. I wasn't ready then, you know, bro. I wasn't. I, I feel uh, go if I, you know if God blesses me, everything's on His timing to get into that. What happens in this day and age where this can go there? You do that and that goes there. Yeah, like straight, yeah. you do straight rhymes and next thing you know, you're, you're gone. Yeah, you're gone. You, 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 you you're A-list, you, you're gone. It sounds like you're approaching music as an adult now, whereas mm. it used to just be bars. That's but and now it's a strategy. Yeah, there's no, there's, there's just bars. And it's there got me no, excited. Yeah, you know, there was no concepts. <laughs> no, I, I can't wait for you guys to hear um, my story, my journey from, uh, living in my side and navigating through there and relationship and you know, obviously there's a song on there called Janice and it's not called Mum you know for a reason it's not yeah. called Mum my grand kind of raised me I, I, I only now uh, got to um, wipe the slate clean with my mum a few months ago just a few months I'm, you know I'm, I'm, you know I'm not 21 do you get what I'm saying so mentally that kind of held yeah. me back as well M- missing a mother's about. wisdom and yeah. Um, all sorts of mad stuff on the EP. Like it's a bit, it's mad, bro. That's the best art, music though. Vulnerable, right? Like, yeah, of course. And you know what? Because I'm at this age, because I'm a lot older now. I, I, no, this is, I don't care whether you like it or not. Yeah, I'm not telling your story. And you know, you're not that, telling that, some other story. This album is more therapy for me. So any any time in my life when I get to a certain point, I play that, and I remember what did you do in 2019? Remember 2016, you stopped doing music. You, after four years, got back here. That e that album is more therapy than, oh, because I know it's a great body of work. It needs to do that many units. Yeah. Let's be realistic, mate. I've been gone for four years. Yeah. I've got to build that trust back with people. I, I, to, I lost my Instagram. I've only got a thousand and something. I had to start again. I lost thousands of followers. I couldn't get on it. Yeah. I had to start again in a new age where everyone's just on a, everyone, yeah. everyone's but, popping. By therapy for yourself, do you mean like you're getting are you getting things off your chest musically now? Like yeah. you're not keeping things in, you're mm. being vulnerable and you're gonna say things. Yeah. Is that I've got I've got to that point now where um I just don't care. I don't care. I'm not asked. That's important though, because anyone I'm, like I say, anyone could jump and just spray a grime sixteen. It doesn't matter anymore. Whereas yeah. if you're getting a subject off your chest that is you feel personally is the right time for you to speak about that. that song's for you. Yeah. But you don't know how many people out there are going through that same shit and need to hear that from someone. Mentally, I've always been a strong person, uh, inspiring people. I've always been a positive, I always give out positive energy um, ever since I've been doing music throughout my whole life. So for people to understand, they didn't know that because I'm the person that could put a brave smile on my face yeah. and keep it moving. i got to get to the next checkpoint. I don't care about anything else. And, and that's what life is. It's like, there's no desk, there's no end goal. There's, there's always another checkpoint, another yeah. checkpoint. So, okay, the album's done, wicked. Whatever happens, happens, it's out. It, 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 whatever, it's done. I ain't, what do you want me to do? Next project, what's go, let's go. What are we on next, what are we doing? What's happening, let's go. Right, so, you know, it's um, it's a, it's just a real feeling to, to get back here. And when I listen to it, I am very proud of it. Um, uh, the level and the quality on there is um, yeah it's going to be it's, it's going to be very interesting it's going to be very interesting uh, well, well I can't wait to yeah. <laughs> 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 put it on now I'll put it on and flash the lights on and off I know my music I'm, I'm seasoned enough to know good music okay music and great music I, I, I wouldn't put anything out um, that isn't top tier 
You say you've got a date for it. Was it November? November. November. We're not. November. We're not. Um, we're not we, 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 this year, this November. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna Let's start recording it this November. Because <laughs> 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 you can't come back on in ten years, say November. <laughs> we're buying fuck off. Yeah, think, I need think he's outside. I think he's outside. <laughs> hey, quit wanting the shop. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's been a pleasure having you. Mate, oh, no, thank time. you for thank having you. me, man. You know, this is the first um, exclusive um, sort of talk. And, and I guess, obviously, once the music comes out, a lot of people will be interested to have a conversation. Um, um, so, yeah, thank you for having me, man. It was much man, appreciated. Really I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, well, this is sort of um, our we'll definitely well. come back um, and do an exclusive freestyle. I yeah, definitely. Music. I actually wrote something for you last night as well. Sick. All right, right over there. The it's real how you mean. I've changed it to real how you mean. Okay. You don't, don't see what's going on. When it's the branding once we... Don't see. When you come back on, we'll know then. <laughs> <laughs> now, Anything else you want to plug at all? Or? Um, nah, I just um, big up to all the um, the people that, that still remember who I am in terms of my foundation, um, my history, and what I've actually done for this city. And that was the whole point of the, um, the Lost Archives. Is just before I brought out my album, I had to... Now it's documented. There's no, oh, he he come before him or he did this before. Yeah. We all done great things. Everyone's done great. I can, everyone's played a part um, to get Manchester where it is now. I just wanted to make sure that You're like is set in stone. Himself. There's yeah. no conversations to be had anymore. Um, and now it's like, here's the new grown, new aura, new energy real. So yeah, uh, um, yeah, man, it's good. I feel good. I'm in a good place. So, oh, well, that's what's coming on, bro. I appreciate that. Respect. Oh, man. Can't be doing all that shaking or corona business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm at yeah. elbow. Oh, oh, that. He's giving me a chicken <laughs> wing. <laughs> that, you mad cunt. <laughs> as always, with the Arkid podcast, make sure you do click like, comment, and subscribe as well because we need a thousand. Otherwise, we're going to be skimping forever and we can't monetize videos. <laughs> <laughs> I think my car's getting robbed outside. Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, nice it's one. been a pleasure, man. <coughs> Wicked. Should we record it now? It was a good practice run. <laughs> <laughs>